Hello, uh, my name is Ravi Krishna. I am the current head of the department of the Department of Chemical Engineering. In this video, a uh, few of my colleagues and uh, students in the department will explain some of the uh, research areas uh, that, that are currently underway in our department. Research in our department is highly interdisciplinary at, uh, with, uh, and we also have a variety of collaborations with uh, faculty across the institute and other departments, with other institutes in the, in, within India and also abroad. Research areas uh, broadly fall under a few of the categories such as energy, environment, materials, process systems engineering. The work on uh, in these areas happens to on a variety of processes, uh, development of new processes, novel processes and products, and also the development of data analytical techniques associated with these products and processes. In the department, we are constantly striving to keep uh, our infrastructure and curriculum updated uh, to be in synchrony with uh, the needs of the industry, with the academia and society at large. Thank you. Hello, I am uh, Rajneesh Kumar. I am a faculty in the Department of Chemical Engineering at IIT Madras. What do you see here is uh, an experimental setup where we study carbon dioxide sequestration. My research group uh, in the department works in carbon dioxide capture and sequestration. Carbon dioxide capture is necessary because the CO2 which comes out from industries are typically mixed with other gases. So the first step is to capture the CO2 from uh, its associated gases. We use different methods for capturing CO2. We have also done significant amount of work on direct air capture of carbon dioxide. So once you have captured the CO2, that's pure CO2 has to be either utilized or sequestered. So this setup, what you see over here is for CO2 sequestration. Uh, what we propose is that you can basically pass the CO2 100 to 500 meters below the seabed where the CO2 will come in contact with the water and at the right temperature and pressure which is present under the seabed, this water and the gas, the CO2 will convert into a solid hydrate and our study is focusing on how to identify the rate at which CO2 can be converted into hydrate and what would be the stability of CO2 once it has converted into solid hydrate. Why one has to convert a gaseous gas into solid? Because otherwise this CO2 will ultimately leak into the atmosphere and then once it is in solid form, you would be able to say that this is sequestered for geological time scale. But in my research group, we focus mostly on CO2 capture and sequestration. Thank you. Hi, this is Tarak Patra. Uh, I am an assistant professor of chemical engineering here at IIT Madras. My research group works on functional material. We use large scale computer simulations and AI to design functional material, material that are of interest to energy environment and sustainable technologies. We look into materials from their molecular scale, understand intermolecular interactions and processes and manipulate them to design new material with target properties. Uh, we choose uh, problems that are of interest to, to new technologies and societal need and study their fundamental properties and design rules. Some of the problems which we have been interested in recent times are polymer electrolyte for battery technologies, uh, polymer nanocomposites for membrane development, sustainable and recyclable plastics, so in my research group, there are about 16 graduate students and postdoc addressing various aspects of material development and doing cutting edge groundbreaking research at the interface of molecular engineering, machine learning, and high performance computing. In addition to IIT Madras, Science and Engineering Research Board, and National, Science Co National Supercomputing Missions have been sponsoring our work. I encourage you to go through our group website and feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. Thank you for your attention. Hello, this is Professor Niket Kaisere from the Department of Chemical Engineering at IIT Madras. I welcome you to a brief journey about our research. Our group focuses on various aspects of energy engineering, trying to understand the role of catalyst in conversion of carbon dioxide and in hydrogen synthesis. Specifically, we work on several technologies that will help India reach the goal of net carbon zero neutral that we have promised to achieve by 2070. For example, we work on new age solid adsorbent materials that can capture carbon dioxide either from flue gases or from air. We also work on conversion of carbon dioxide to fuels and value added chemicals through catalytic routes. 
Another part of our research work is to look at micro reactors, which is basically small size reactors where the that can convert various fuels into hydrogen. Hydrogen is an important energy carrier and these type of technologies will improve the overall efficiency of various catalytic processes used in the chemical industry. What we try to do is to understand how the interactions of gas phase molecules happen with solid catalyst surface and how we can harness that understanding in order to make all the processes more efficient and therefore slightly more greener than they exist currently. Thank you for watching this video and bye. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Sapna Sinharawa. I'm an assistant professor in Department of Chemical Engineering, IIT Madras. I'm the PI of the research group Multiphase Flow and Porous Media. My research group is mainly working on uh, multi-scale studies of multiphase flows related to chemical process industries and carbon capture both experimentally and uh, numerically. A uh, few of my re ongoing research activities in my research group are uh, from uh, fundamental to industrial scale uh, studies of three-phase heterogeneous uh, suspension system for applications like slurry bubble column and also flotation cell etc. And et the second research activity which is going on in my research lab is on uh, finding process intensification approaches uh, for sorbent based CO2 capture application, for example, for development of new sorbent material, uh, development of new sorbent structure or reactor modules uh, for to intensify the carbon capture process uh, using solid sorbents. The another uh, research activity which is ongoing in my research group is on absorption and desorption behavior of solvent based CO2 capture application. Here is also uh, the process intensification includes uh, the uh, development of new blended soft uh, solvents like biphasic solvent and uh, reactor internals to increase the mass transfer in these uh, processes. Apart from this, studies on reactive transport mechanism in heterogeneous porous media is also going on in my research group. So this is a brief introduction of my research group and if you have any question, uh, any queries about the research activities in my research group, feel free to contact me. I will be happy to answer. Bye-bye. Welcome to my research group. Uh, we call it the uh, PUSH Research League and uh, what the research group does is it focuses on basically three areas. In the first area, uh, we do fundamental work which focuses on mathematical modeling and simulation of uh, processes at different scales, could be different length scales and time scales. We use uh, first principles modeling and uh, what we do is we do predictions of the behavior of systems focusing on multiphase flows and nonlinear interactions. Uh, idea is that these models can be used to troubleshoot the performance of systems. These could be reactors, these could be distillation columns and uh, we have basically uh, come up with a whole bunch of uh, uh, software programs developed in MATLAB and Mathematica for this. The second uh, focus area of the group is in developing technologies which would basically help treating waste coming from industry. Specifically, what we have done recently is taken electronic waste and focusing on printed circuit boards. We have developed a technology which is uh, based on hydrometallurgical principles to recover copper, lead and tin. And uh, the nice part about this technology is it is uh, a zero discharge technology because there are recycled streams in the process which are basically going to ensure that nothing leaves out of the process. Uh, at what we are doing at this stage is putting up a plant which can process about 100 tons per annum of uh, printed circuit boards at BHL Trichy which is uh, a project sponsored by the government of India. The third focus area that we have is on sensor development based on microfluidics. So, uh, idea is to devise sensors based on colorimetric principles 
as well as electrochemical principles so that we have good selectivity and sensitivity. Uh, we have developed sensors for environmental monitoring of heavy metals in water bodies, of uh, uh, antibiotics in water bodies and also develop sensors to detect um, the material like uh, specific chemicals present in agricultural products like seeds of plants. I welcome you to uh, look at my website and get more information. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nagarajan. I am a professor in the Department of Chemical Engineering here at IIT Madras. I have been here now for uh, almost 20 years and it's been an enjoyable experience. My research program encompasses process intensification as the primary focus. And uh, in particular, we look at how external fields can be brought in to make processes run faster, better, and cheaper. Uh, in one of the specific processes that I'm particularly interested in is acoustic fields. When you take an acoustic field that's operating in the frequency range of uh, 20 kilohertz ab and above, and you couple it to a liquid, some interesting things happen. Um, the, there are oscillating uh, pressure fields that set up in the liquid, which causes bubbles to form, and then the bubbles implode, they release energy in the form of a shock wave. This shock wave then uh, can be used to drive many process processes um, much faster and better. Um, as you keep increasing the frequency from the 20 to 40 kilohertz range all the way up to one megahertz and above, the phenomenon changes slightly. The bubbles that form and implode are now much smaller because of the higher frequency. So when they implode, you don't get a shock wave effect. Instead, these bubbles, which happen to be there in a much higher density, uh, kind of coalesce together and, and release a, a, a high pressure or high velocity shear wave, which uh, can, uh, again, move across surfaces and cause changes to happen. So this combination of uh, high frequency acoustic streaming and low frequency cavitation can be used to drive many processes in interesting ways. For example, heat transfer can be amplified. Um, mass transfer phenomena can be made to run much faster. Uh, mixing destratification can be made to happen in a much shorter time scale by using acoustic fields. Um, synthesis of nanoparticles by sonofragmentation becomes a possibility when you use particularly the low frequency um, cavitational fields. Even things like clean coal technology can be enhanced by the use of these acoustic fields. For example, you can take coal particles and use ultrasonic cleaning to remove ash, sulfur, and other impurities from the coal prior to combustion so that they burn much cleaner and cause fewer problems downstream. Another uh, recent application that I've been looking into is uh, formation of nano emulsions of plant oils for cancer treatment. It's been known for many, many centuries that spice oils have uh, uh, an uh, effect on uh, mitigating cancer symptoms. But the problem has always been, how do you administer these uh, spice oils? Well, it turns out that if you can formulate them as a nano emulsion, they can be orally administered and can be uh, targeted and directed. So we are doing uh, research in our laboratory now on using, again, ultrasonic and megasonic fields to make stable nano emulsions that can be used for uh, uh, combating cancer. Uh, I, currently, the lab trials have been completed. Animal trials are now ongoing, and if those are successful, We'll take the next step to clinical trials and hopefully within two to three years, we, have, we hope to have these products on the market and alleviate the, uh, the suffering of people who have cancer. So I'm very excited about the research that uh, we have ongoing. And I think it has many elements in it that combine various aspects of uh, chemical engineering as well as uh, being very interdisciplinary in nature. And um, um, Again, I'm, I'm terribly happy that uh, I'm working at IIT Madras in this department and um, I'm very pleased with the students that I have to work with and the postdoctoral scholars that I have to work with and of course, all my colleagues who bring their own expertise to bear on these problems. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is uh, Raghuram Chetty. I'm a faculty at the Department of uh, Chemical Engineering here at IIT Madras. Uh, our research group, uh, which is the electrochemical engineering group, uh, work is focused on broad areas of energy and the environment. On the energy front, we work on clean energy, uh, particularly we are looking at uh, producing hydrogen. 
uh, using uh, water electrolysis. So currently worldwide if we look at about 4% of hydrogen is produced uh, by water electrolysis and one of the reasons for this is you know the process and the material involved are very expensive and uh, our group is working at addressing uh, this cost issue and the durability issue by developing materials which are of low cost and which can uh, sustain for a longer period of time. And we also work on utilizing the hydrogen which is produced by the electrolysis uh, in the fuel cell where we can convert the hydrogen gas into electricity. On the fuel cell front, we work on uh, various aspects of the material development like uh, the catalyst, the anode and the cathode uh, and the support material which are used to disperse this catalyst and also on designing the flow field where the hydrogen and oxygen gas will flow into the fuel cell and the overall uh, stack development. So uh, we look at options where we can increase the durability of the fuel cell and also where we can reduce the cost by either uh, using a low amount of platinum in the catalyst and also by looking at non-platinum catalyst for the fuel cell. And coming to the environmental front, uh, we work on one of the major uh, problems of CO2 uh, uh, the greenhouse gas which is being emitted into the atmosphere. So we are trying to convert the carbon dioxide into uh, fuels such as uh, formic acid or methanol and we use this using electrochemical process where uh, we can use either a current or a voltage for the converting carbon dioxide into uh, uh, useful fuel. And, uh, other aspects in which we work in the environmental uh, areas are uh, heavy metal remediation. So we have a lot of industries in and around Chennai where chromium is widely used either in tanning industries or in chrome plating industries. So we also look at uh, treating these waste uh, and recovering or you know or converting chromium into uh, less toxic form so that the wastewater can be reused in the uh, industry. And uh, we also work on converting uh, oxides of nitrogen into ammonia. So ammonia is also considered as a hydrogen carrier uh, uh, because hydrogen has its own safety issue and converting uh, into ammonia and transporting has its, uh, has its own benefit. So we are also looking at process in which we can convert uh, oxides of nitrogen into ammonia. So these are some of the research areas which our group is involved in. And, uh, Thank you for listening to us. Hello, uh, my name is Sumesh and I am an associate professor in the Department of Chemical Engineering. So um, our lab called uh, Soft and Active uh, Matter. So we uh, work on um, several problems in an interdisciplinary area but using concepts from chemical engineering. So using concepts from fluid mechanics, heat and mass transfer, reaction engineering, etc. We um, develop, uh, you know, we work on fundamental problems in the area of soft and active matter. So some of the applications that we have in mind are uh, targeted drug delivery uh, for uh, treatments like cancer, where you want to deliver a particular drug at a desired location or the location of the tumor and we look at dynamics of the robot that will take the drug to a particular point. We look at the fluid mechanics associated with it. We also look at you know collective motion of cells and so on let's say to grow an artificial organ. The other area that's interesting for us is uh, you know dynamics of interfaces where we look at um, uh, uh, heat transfer or transport phenomena related problems but including interfaces particularly when droplets are involved. Now these uh, droplets that you see in drop wise condensation heat exchangers, in adsorption columns, in distillation columns, there are lot of multi-phase uh, uh, flow problems appear and they may also have evaporation of droplets in involved and these droplets could be either made up of pure fluids or suspensions with particles, polymers, surfactants, etc. present. So we look at uh, heat and mass transfer associated with these droplets as well. And our primary tool, tool is computations and we use computations to model this phenomena, understand these problems for several of these applications as I mentioned. Thank you.
I am Abhijit Deshpande. I have been at uh, IIT Madras Chemical Engineering since 96. Uh, and uh, my areas of research are in rheology and polymers. Uh, rheology is basically mechanics, mechanics of materials which flow. And uh, in this, for example, materials up close like uh, toothpaste or uh, a ketchup or, or uh, things like shampoo or even uh, in our joints, we have synovial fluids. So these are materials which uh, flow in a very complex manner. They are non-Newtonian fluids. And in rheology, we study deformation behavior of these kind of systems. Specifically in our group, we are looking at systems such as uh, supramolecular polymers, which are uh, polymers formed due to self-assembly of small molecules. We also look at uh, thixotropic suspensions, where uh, the structure and flow behavior are very intricately connected. At the same time, we are also looking at a lot of natural polymer systems these days. For example, casein glue or uh, pectin uh, gel, which is, uh, you know, available from fruits and plant sources. The other aspect of uh, research that grows on in our lab is related to polymeric systems, which are smart. Uh, what do I mean by smart? Uh, smart basically because they can be used as, let's say, robotic uh, components. They can be used for sensing or actuating. So therefore, uh, soft robotics using soft polymers, polymers which can be extend a lot, so that is uh, one aspect of uh, looking at these kind of material systems. We also look at uh, membranes and electrolytes. Uh, so in these aspects, we try to look at material science of polymeric system, try to evolve, blend, make composites and make them with most optimum possible properties. In terms of rheology, we also look at those kind of uh, systems where uh, we are using flow behavior while manufacturing and processing. So when we are trying to process, let's say, a pharmaceutical formulation or we are trying to make it a rocket propellant. So during preparation of these materials, we have to, you know, mixing, we have to make material flow out of a mold or out of an opening. So we need to understand the rheology. So therefore, our, uh, our, our research is related to materials, their flow and deformation as well as their electromechanical properties. Thank you. I am Susie Vargas. In, in our lab, we work on polymer, the ubiquitous materials that surround us polymers. Uh, many times when we hear polymers, we think of only synthetic polymers, but uh, we work on both natural and synthetic polymers. Examples are like uh, uh, proteins and uh, other materials that surround us, which are natural polymers. Um, so basically, uh, in this lab, we look at the mechanical behavior and the structural, uh, polymeric structure that contributes to this, uh, uh, most of the mechanical properties or mechanical behavior of the materials, either during processing or after processing. So we also look at uh, uh, many, uh, uh, so for this understanding, uh, uh, we look at from molecular structure upward, for example, many of these polymers have what are known as hierarchical structures which are form, or constituted uh, whether in the, in the natural polymers. So to understand them, we have to use different kinds of tools uh, from uh, FTAR. Uh, so many times we do fabricate and process these polymers in solution as well as in solid state uh, during melt, melt processing in the labs. And uh, for this, we use um, different um, uh, processing uh, techniques, solution processing as well as uh, like spin coating, or for example, we use um, melt processing like compression molding, etc., and uh, mixing of these polymers. And to understand their properties, we use FTAR, UV based, uh, and other uh, spectroscopic properties, microscopic techniques, SEM, TM, TEM, etc. And in addition to that, we also use differential scanning calorimetry, DMA, uh, mechanical properties using SWIC and uh, universal testing machines and other uh, materials or biaxial testing machines. So we work also on conducting polymers, both electronic and uh, proton conducting polymers or ionic conducting polymers, both are from, uh, from the uh, fabrication to um, um, understanding the mechanical behavior from, so, so basically in the context of structure property relations of these materials. Uh, also we look at uh, sustainable aspects of polymers. So in this context, we look at many natural polymers for their applications as well as uh, looking at their processing. Uh, in addition to that, we also look at uh, recycling of uh, polymers, uh, especially in the context of uh, sustainable way of ways of looking at uh, recycling, both um, um, uh, high volume plastic waste uh, like polyethylene and other uh, polymers and also uh, composite materials like, um, for example, aerospace waste, um, epoxy um, carbon composite is an example material that we try to recycle using uh, sustainable approaches in the lab. Hi. 
I'm Idhaya Rajamani. I'm a professor of uh, chemical engineering department here. And I work on uh, uh, materials. Uh, I work on understanding uh, uh, materials response and properties uh, using computational methods. Uh, for instance, uh, molecular dynamics, Monte Carlo simulations, and other uh, numerical methods are being used to understand uh, molecular uh, properties. And based on these understanding, um, we develop uh, materials uh, for a specific applications. So some of the ongoing projects in our group includes uh, uh, making of uh, biopolymer based uh, packaging material, uh, protein based uh, uh, textile materials. Also, we are looking at some nanotechnology based uh, solutions for uh, mitigating microplastic pollution. In another project, uh, we uh, uh, develop uh, nanomaterials to uh, prevent uh, protein aggregation that has consequences in uh, uh, many of the neurodegenerative diseases. So this kind of gives a summary of uh, various projects that we are doing currently. Thank you. Hi, my name is uh, Basavraj. I'm a faculty in the Department of Chemical Engineering. Um, I work in the area of uh, colloids and interfacial science. Um, uh, so this is a field where uh, we typically work with um, um, uh, smaller, uh, you know, particles or smaller, uh, you know, length scale objects, and typically uh, anything between the size range of one nanometer to about one micrometer. It's called a, a colloid, and you know, and there's a lot of uh, interest in this particular uh, field because uh, many industries do use. Uh, uh, nanoscale and, 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 and microscale uh, particles and, and, and other materials uh, in the formulations. Uh, and uh, so we in our lab, we look at uh, fundamental aspects of uh, uh, colloidal dispersion, uh, nanoparticle systems, uh, polymer solutions, as well as uh, surfactant solutions. And uh, uh, we use tools like you know, optical microscopy, a uh, lot of light scattering based techniques, uh, as well as you know uh, techniques that deal with the flow and deformation, which is rheology, uh, all these techniques are used in in a tandem to understand uh, you know the microstructure of these materials and how do they behave when you subject them to flow. Um, and uh, our work is uh, primarily experimental in nature. Uh, however, I do collaborate with uh, a lot of faculty in the department and as well as across the institute uh, to get a a better understanding of uh, you know what we do uh, using some simulations and a little bit of uh, uh, scaling arguments and uh, a bit of a theory as well okay so that's what uh, uh, we do as a whole so therefore uh, uh, we um, uh, I, and we, I know I also want to mention that we also uh, uh, collaborate extensively with industry so we have had uh, uh, projects with several uh, uh, industrial partners both in terms of fundamental developments as well as uh, some applications so uh, so, um, yeah, thank you so much uh, for your, uh, uh, for watching the video uh, and I'll be ha happy to connect more and then, you know, have more discussion on, on, on some of these things. Yeah. Hello everyone. I am Professor Kannan from the Department of Chemical Engineering IIT Madras. Uh, in the next few minutes, I'll be uh, giving an outline of my research activities. My uh, research team and I are working on environmental pollution control uh, using adsorption. Adsorption is a really fascinating field and there is scope for uh, providing innovative solutions to many of the industrial problems. We are uh, looking at uh, novel adsorbents involving new material. We want to tailor these adsorbents so that they have uh, desirable properties like uh, high adsorption capacity, fast uptake rate of the uh, pollutant and above all the adsorbent should be uh, capable of being reused over many cycles. So um, we are looking at sustainable solutions to treating environmental uh, pollutants. Uh, also in addition to uh, material synthesis and uh, characterization we also look at uh, the uh, detailed kinetic mechanism of the uptake of the solutes by the adsorbent. We also uh, use uh, design of experiment strategy to uh, optimize the uh, adsorption process using a response surface methodology. We of course uh, validate our model and confirm the uh, 
optimum uh, optima predicted by uh, additional experiments. At present, we are looking at different adsorbents, starting from the uh, conventional activated carbon. We also look at uh, metal organic frameworks, zeolites, and clays. In addition to focusing on the uh, adsorbent material, as chemical engineers, we should also focus on the reactor or the contactor in which the adsorption pro process is occurring. Uh, there is considerable scope for improving the efficiency of the uh, removal of the uh, toxic pollutants by suitable design modifications to the reactor. We have found uh, considerable uh, process intensification when we uh, modified the design of our uh, reactor. We had an uh, advanced ox oxidation process along with adsorption happening in a batch reactor. We were not very happy with the uh, performance. So we went for a reactor modification where we improved the contact between the uh, uh, adsorbent and uh, the gases and we found that uh, there was a significant uh, improvement in the overall process. So to summarize, adsorption is a very versatile uh, technique and uh, there is plenty of scope for collaborating with the industry to find innovative, economical and uh, viable solutions to many of the problems. I look forward to uh, interact with the industry and uh, discuss their separation and purification problems and hopefully we can find uh, solutions together. Thank you for your attention. I am Mansa Manoj. I am a PhD scholar working with Dr. Arvind Kumar Chandran. Our lab's field of expertise can be broadly classified into three, energy conversion, energy storage, and battery safety. Talking about energy conversion, we work in two stratas. One can be the fundamentally research work based, and the other can be the pilot setup based for uh, green hydrogen. Talking about the fundamental research side, we work on material development for different types of processes like production of green hydrogen and carbon dioxide reduction to value added products. Talking about green hydrogen, we have we do, we do have materials for uh, direct photoelectrochemical studies which can produce green hydrogen. Now coming to energy conversion and storage, we have a uh, stake bearer. Okay. Now coming to energy conversion, our lab is a team which works on mechanically rechargeable zinc air batteries. So it is a new technology in which Next, talking about the energy storage part, our lab also works on mechanically rechargeable zinc air batteries. Now, talking about battery safety, there are numerous number of batteries that we use in the market nowadays. And we have to know under which conditions these batteries are safe, safe to use and can be used under harsh conditions as well. So our so our lab does accelerated testing of these different varieties of batteries and study about how and when these batteries fails or is safe to use. These are the three types of or the three categories in which our lab is expert in. And we also uh, work on renewable integration. And uh, apart from this, our lab also work on the renewable integration part. So I am Professor S. Ramanathan in the Department of Chemical Engineering, IIT Madras. Our research activities can be broadly grouped into four categories. Some of our students work on electrochemical reduction of carbon dioxide to produce carbon monoxide or formic acid. These are two chemicals that can be commercially produced using electrochemical CO2 reduction in a commercially viable process. So we want to understand this. Another set of students are working on metal water batteries. These are similar to metal air batteries, but they are slightly different because they will be used deep in the ocean. So air will not be available. We have to use water as one of the reactants. There is limited information available on this. So we want to understand these also better. Another student is working on electrochemical biosensor to detect diseases that are transmitted use transmitted by mosquitoes. 
So, we want to produce biosensors to detect dengue, malaria and chikungunya. And one student is working on modeling capacity fade in lithium ion batteries that are used in electric vehicles. As you can see, the common theme running across all our activities is application of electrochemistry to commercially viable activities. Thank you. Hi, uh, I am Arun Thangirala. I am a faculty here at the Department of uh, Chemical Engineering, IIT Madras. I am also an affiliate faculty at the Robert Bosch Center for Data Science and AI and a core faculty member uh, of uh, two centers, one on complex systems and other on uh, data science and AI. So, our research group works at the intersection of uh, process systems engineering, a very broad field that uses mathematical tools to explain, design, optimize and control systems and uh, of course, uh, data science slash machine learning. So, uh, if you talk about uh, the research works that we carry on, you can think of them as a generic meaning domain agnostic uh, theoretical works where we develop tools for uh, controlling, for uh, detecting faults and developing models uh, from data. And uh, specifically when it comes to domains, because of the uh, interdisciplinary principles that are involved, cross disciplinary principles that are involved in process systems engineering, since we use math and stats tools, we are able to traverse a range of disciplines starting all the way from engineering to biology to climate to uh, seismology. So, just to give you uh, a feel of the kind of problems that we work on, we have recently developed an algorithm that detects the onset of earthquake from very low quality seismograms. This is one of the state of the art algorithms that has been published in the literature about a year ago. This particular algorithm uses tools from signal processing, from statistics and from fault detection techniques in systems engineering. So, you can see how we are able to bring together tools from different fields to solve a specific problem. Very recently, now we have uh, formed a group that cuts across the institutes to solve a very important problem in uh, climate which is that of predicting extreme events. So, it is a very, uh, this is kind of the fresh off the oven project. We are going to now embark on a three year project to model the, uh, the climate uh, systems so as to predict extreme events, understand them and so on. So, the question is what kind of models do we use, what kind of techniques do we use? We use all kinds of cutting edge models and traditional models. By cutting edge models, I mean complex networks which are perhaps the state of the art modeling paradigms used across different disciplines of physics, engineering and biology. And we also use state of the art ML algorithms and artificial intelligence algorithms to be able to fuse all kinds of data. In order to really propel our research and make sure that our research reaches out and attracts many people um, across the uh, country, we offer some uh, very exciting courses all the way from um, teaching data driven modeling to uh, modeling uh, networks from data and how do we estimate, how do we uh, use uh, state of the art filters like state estimation filters like Kalman filter, particle filter and so on to estimate hidden variables from data and so many other courses. This is in collaboration not um, just within the faculty in our department but across departments and across institutes and across countries. So, you see that we have a four dimensional uh, research collaboration approach um, to solve problems of different kinds across uh, different uh, domains. Thank you.